it is time. I'm doing the worst makeup of 2023. And that means I have to put these all on my face and relive the memories. Now, if you guys don't follow me on like my short form content, every single month or sometimes every other month, I do a worst of the month video. And you know what? I'll put things that maybe didn't work out for me, things that I didn't love for whatever reasons, all of that. You know, there's a lot of subpar or below average makeup that is launched, but I will say generally speaking, brands have gotten a grasp that we want good quality, so they aren't launching a lot of really bad quality products. So I had to narrow down the worst makeup of 2023 to truly just offensive makeup. So while there was a lot of other products that I was eh about, didn't like, didn't feel like they really did anything, that kind of situation, these are products that they did something, offended me. You know, <laughs> they performed very badly for me. So it's best to do these worst of makeup styles as I apply so you can see, but sometimes they do make a liar out of me. But I don't see for, I don't foresee that happening for a number of these products, so. Let's get real, take a look at my skin, and let's get going. Actually, let me turn the light up just a little bit. Okay, perfect. So let's start off with our base products. Oh, by the way, obviously this is just my opinion. My opinion is most definitely not the end all be all. Everybody has different uh, ways that they apply their makeup, different skin type, different preferences. So all of that comes into play, but this is stuff that didn't work out for me. If I'm offending a product that you like, don't worry. It's feelings aren't gonna be hurt, we'll be okay. And if you did disagree with me oh my gosh by all means let me know in the comments what worked out for you totally fine maybe give you some tips on better ways that I can apply it I'm always open to that but um I don't I don't see my opinion changing too much on these but let's get into it so I do have a skincare product to start us off it's an SPF this is from the brand Kiehl's and it's the Super Fluid Daily UV Defense. And this is my formal apology to the foundations that I thought were bad and thought that they were heavy and oily because I was wearing this. So for the first few times that I wore this, I really loved this. And then I realized that my makeup was looking heavy and oily and the common denominator was this. So turns out I hate this. Now, the reason that it bamboozled me at first, as you can see, it's this really liquidy consistency. It feels amazing on the skin. I'm trying to apply as little as possible because despite me not loving this product, I want to see if I can get a good makeup look. I'm, I feel like I can't. You know, most of the time for bad products, I can sometimes wear the look out anyways so this it looks okay at this point it feels fantastic at this point but every time i wear this it gets so heavy as the day goes on even without product on top my skin looks really oily glossy and shiny and then oh god forbid i put a foundation over top like i said i apologize to the foundations that i said were terrible but it was actually this i found the errors of my way lots of bad primers that i tried this year so the next one is from the brand Lawless. This is the Set the Stage Hydrating and Soothing Primer Serum. This feels great. And then you put anything over top of it and it pills like crazy. You have, well, I have to redo my makeup whenever I wear this and put products over top. It just disagrees with pretty much everything I put on top of it. I know, I always get the spiel when I talk about primers, water-based, silicone-based, no. This disagrees with everything, it doesn't matter but it feels great. So right now, I like it, but I have to be very, very careful with applying products on top because the times that I did wear this, I had to like barely touch my face with my foundation so that they wouldn't peel off. Kind of same situation with this next one, just the affordable version of horribly pilling. <laughs> this is from Pacifica. It's the Vegan Collagen Skin Solve. It's supposed to prime, blur, and hydrate. Same deal with this one. It just bamboozles, bamboozles. <laughs> it just bamboozles you at first because it feels so nice. It feels like it's going to be a great base for makeup. And then anything I put on top just pills way too much. It has less of a glow than the Lawless. Not that that matters because I don't recommend either. And by the way, I was being naughty. I had something that needed pop and 
I went for it. But anyways, same deal with the Lawless. Pretty much feels amazing. Doesn't wear well with anything. Okay, this one I would say if I had to take one out of this video, it would be this because I suppose I can see the appeal of it for a very small number of people. <laughs> this is from Kosas. It's the Glow IV Vitamin Infused Skin Enhancer. What it is is a glitter lotion. So they said that there's many ways to apply this. You can mix it in with foundation. I recently did a declutter, but I actually got every single one of these in PR, and I think I kept this one for this video. I got rid of the one that was already open, I think. So that was dumb of me. I did not mean to do that, but anyways. It's just a glitter lotion. When I mix it in with foundation, you don't even see it. When I put it on the high points of my face, it's just not a pretty finish. It's not like shiny enough to be a highlighter. And when I put it all over my face, it's super duper glittery. I just don't know who this product is working for. And I know some people do like it, so obviously there are people out there, but why? <laughs> for me, I don't know if you can see, but it's pure glitter. Oh yeah, and also, do you see this just rolled right off my face? There's that pilling happening. Surprisingly not happening too bad with the Pacifica side, but the Lawless side did not make a liar out of me. Anyways, glitter ball with this one. It's not cute, literal, literal specks of glitter on my face. Okay, foundation. So this one, I don't wanna put it on my face. This is from Bare Minerals. It's the Radiant Natural Liquid Foundation. I've tried it in these last few months. Okay, so this, it's super duper liquidy. Okay, so you gotta make sure the product is well blended. So thin. I had a couple colors and I decluttered one of them and I think the one that I decluttered was the one that I needed to be my skin tone. So, so the fact that this is too light is only gonna emphasize how terrible this foundation is. So that's not great, but it will make a good example. <laughs> but it's very, very thin and it emphasizes fine lines that I didn't even know existed on my face. It's just a majorly unflattering foundation on the skin. And 2022, last year, launched a lot of really bad foundations. They stepped up their game for 2023. This is the only foundation that truly offended me. <laughs> so at least there was an improvement in the performance. Oh, here we go. Do you see that? This foundation does this all the time with different primers. And I think it has to do with that water silicone difference, but nonetheless, it happens way too often. So no, this one is actively bad on my face. <laughs> I cannot stand it. And it's happening over here too, those little balls. I don't know if you can see. It's weird, the pigment or something of the foundation just clumps together on my face and gives me like little dots on my face. I said I was trying to wear this out. I'm not wearing it out. That ain't happening. The wrong shade match is my bad. It probably would look a little bit better if I kept the better color, but this, like need I say more, really. Concealer, bad year for Bare Minerals. We have the Complexion Rescue Brightening Concealer. And the reason for my grievances is it's like a sandy, consistency. It's grainy in here and I feel like the graininess of it translates to my under eyes as well. Unfortunately, my concealer today is also going to be darker than my foundation so that's just going to make the look even prettier but it's very strange with this concealer how it has this grainy texture and I feel like when I blend it out right away it looks better, it almost kind of squishes the graininess, but then it comes back and then my under eyes look really textured. And this year was a phenomenal year for concealers, probably the best year ever of concealer launches. So there is gonna be a wealth of concealer options <laughs> in my yearly favorites video, but this one was majorly, majorly disappointing to me. My lips are looking so dry. <laughs> Let me put a little bit of balm on. Okay, I have a gel bronzer. That's going to add to the beauty of this look. So this is the Jones Road Gel Bronzer. This one, I cannot apply without it looking patchy. I was originally so excited for this product. 
because Jones Road, they're queens of that natural makeup look, but this one just peels the foundation up underneath, and I never feel like it looks smooth or even on my skin. It just continues to look really patchy. Kind of looks good right now, though. <laughs> Maybe my base is so bad that anything I put over top, no matter how bad, looks good. No, I feel like this demo is making a liar out of me on this bronzer, but I, I use this extensively, I promise. That's why I have my whole speed review series. This has gone through a number of trials and tribulations where I just felt like the application was very uneven and patchy, but for some reason, these horrible products I have underneath Looks kind of good with them, not gonna lie. I can't even fake it. <laughs> okay, so apparently this is for once agreeing with the products that I have underneath it, but I swear, it's uneven. The next product that I have is from Pixie Beauty. This is the On The Glow Bronze Tinted Moisturizer Stick. I'm gonna say that one more time. Now I'm gonna say that one more time. On The Glow Bronze. Does this look like a bronzer shade to you? This is not a bronzer shade. There's another one in the range that's a little bit closer to being a bronzer shade, but still not a bronzer shade. So anyways, it's pink. And this is just a bad example. I have the other color somewhere else. But this formula in general is also quite patchy. It peels the makeup off underneath. I don't know if you can see that, but it literally just moved the foundation and took it off my face and it's not pigmented enough to really apply it like this the only way that you're going to get color from it is by swiping it on the cheek and that's also just in general part of the appeal of this product and the packaging is that you're supposed to be able to just swipe it on and go so not only is the formula bad the color is strange don't have any good words to say about this I tried so hard to make this Lottie London Sweet Blush work because to be honest, there's not a lot of Lottie London products that I like, so I was feeling bad. I really was trying to get these to work, but every single time my cheeks looked so patchy. So to try and to get it to look even because despite all of what I'm saying, I really am trying to get a good look. We'll do this color on this cheek. This one's a little bit lighter and it does fade not a good way the darker color doesn't fade as much that i'll show you but i just feel like it looks chunky now it looks uneven now just not a fan of this formula i'm going to use the darker shade of this now so i'm just putting it on the back of my hand using a brush i always get asked about this brush i don't know if they sell it anymore this is a morphe m536 in case they do it's just a good synthetic sh brush so the hairs do really well with liquids and creams and the shape is really useful on the face and it really needs a bath. Now the reason that I would try so hard with this so many times is because it was almost decent, right? Sometimes you could get it to work but most of the times they faded or just it's almost underneath of this cheek product that I feel like everything moves around so the finish of it is nice but I just feel like the foundation that I put on underneath is moved and disappearing in some areas very very strange okay to set my face this is more of a finishing powder but it's really just overall gimmicky which disappoints me a little bit from Makeup Forever because they were for many years viewed as a professional brand so this is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Twist and Light Powder so it has this gimmicky feature in the packaging which is extremely inefficient where you're supposed to twist it and you get the perfect amount of powder that you need whatever you don't get the perfect amount of powder that you need now I'm gonna swatch on the back of my hand this is more so of a finishing powder I would say as opposed to like a setting powder hold on I didn't get enough product out like it told me I would okay there we go it's really shiny I feel like and it emphasizes the pores and whatnot on my face like crazy so I'm just gonna get a little bit you know what let me set with a good powder first real quick I just needed a little bit of regular powder on first and I'm tapping off the excess and it's literally like a highlighter did you see that it whitened my face 
And then if you use more of a dense brush, and I'm being really careful not to apply too much of it, but it, it becomes white. It emphasizes pores and whatnot because of the shine to it. I'm gonna show you it as a highlighter. This is what's supposed to set our face, a literal highlighter. Overall, it just left a bad taste in my mouth because it's inefficient packaging. It was such a gimmick, really. Makeup Forever has so many amazing products. This was not it. I think two of the worst brow products launched this year and my brows suffered from it. So I'm literally scared to use this again. This is the NYX Zero to Brow Gel Longwear Brow Gel. Now, I will give her credit where credit is due. This will be in your brows for days. The problem is how it looks. I don't want that in my brows for days. Here goes nothing. I'm going to brush my brow hairs with the spoolie. So instantly you can see that it's a liquid brow product, which instantly makes you lose so much control. And I'm gonna try and shape it here. Get no definition with this. If you mess up, you're done for. I'm gonna use the spoolie to try and blend this. I will say this is the best application thus far I've gotten with it, but that's because I'm familiar with this product. It has failed me many times, but this, nothing we can do about that. That's stuck there. So you wanna make sure you, you have as little product as possible because if you have too much, it will get everywhere. I'm just going to insert a photo here of the first time that I tried it. It was actually a colossal disaster. But today, we're more experienced. The scary part of this product is brushing it out. Do not brush outside of your brows. You can see I already started to get it kind of messy looking. There's nothing you can really do about it other than cover it with concealer. So the first time I used it, I had too much liquid in my brows and then I was brushing this out and it just became a huge mess. I cannot with this product. It's just so inefficient. I do get a similar look, but for different reasons with the Milk Makeup Kush Brow Shadow Stick. It looks like a literal eyeshadow stick. What an inefficient shape to fill in your brows. Okay, so this spoolie, too tiny. I need something bigger and quicker since the whole point of this pencil is to be quick anyways. So you just can't get any shape at all with this. It is literally fatter than my eyebrow. <laughs> so I go out of the eyebrow line all the time and you can only use this sharp end to get any sort of definition, but the more you use it, the more dull it's gonna become. I literally cannot fill in anymore or I'm gonna have the thickness of a caterpillar. And the formula itself isn't very good either. It's like sheer almost and it over blends and gets really messy. So the key to make it look good as I attempted to do today is just to literally go like that and cross your fingers. If you have any sparse areas on your eyebrows or need to fake hair like strokes, this is not for you. Honestly, I don't even really recommend it for anybody because if you take one wrong turn, gonna be too much. All things considered with these brow products being so bad, this is the best that they've looked. I'm gonna take a little bit of concealer and try and aid this side a little bit. Okay, we're a little closer because we're moving into the eyes. So I went on a eyeshadow stick rampage this year and I tried so many. And I would say the biggest disappointment has to be these ones from Hard Candy, which once again, I tried really hard to make work because they are such an affordable product, but they, they don't really show up. And if they do show up, they're very sheer in a couple hours. So I'm gonna use the shade Cold Brew. You know, like other than black, this is the darkest we can go. It's a decently smooth application. It's a decent, not amazing. So it's starting off pretty dark. So I was pretty impressed by this at first. I'm gonna take a brush and we're gonna blend it. Decent blending capabilities. No, I really tried to make these work because they had such promise in the beginning of application. And am I crazy or is it already super duper light? And then as time goes on and my I blink my eyes, I open my eyes, it wears down more and more to where it looks like nothing is on the eyelid. For Vunsies, let's just put some on the lower lash line. Very blendable, but too blendable. Anyways, that's these. I find the matte ones to be very sheer, well fade down 
not sheer to start, but they fade down and they're a little bit less creamy as well. Don't like those. Very poor performance as far as an eyeshadow stick goes. And then, ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Do I have to put these on my eyes? These are from Pixi. The Eye Lift Max. These age my eyelids. <sighs> okay, so I'm just gonna put this. This is the darker shade, but it's very light on my eye. Okay, we're good for now, but we're gonna blend it in. And as it blends in, use my finger. It looks really crusty <laughs> on the eyelid. This is just a crusty, crusty product. That's why it makes my eyelids look very aged. It's very unflattering. And there also really isn't too much of a point to it because it, it looks like almost nothing on my eyelid except for the fact that it's crusty. It just looks like crust on my eyelid. I don't think I like Pixie. Most of their products, I am not a fan of. Skincare, fine. Makeup, I am not a fan of their makeup. And this just continues to prove it. But we have more disappointing eyelid products. At this point, I'm just gonna throw them on. Doesn't matter how it looks. Clearly, I'm not a fan of these products. Very strange about the mystery of these Patrick Ta Make It Major multi-dimensional eye toppers. The reason for that being, these launched not too long ago and there is no traces of this ever existing on the internet. They took these off the website and I think it's because of the poor quality. Okay, so I'm going to use the shade It's Giving Rich. I need you to just look. Do you see how chunky this is? Can you believe that that's supposed to go on our eyelid? It just seems very out of character for being a Patrick Ta product. They will follow all over my face too. because they're not gonna stick, which you know, can be solved with the glitter glue. I'm just being dramatic here. It's just so chunky. The look did improve. It does improve, excuse me, as you put it on your eyelid, right? Especially since I did have a base that kind of matched it. The dark brown base is perfect for this. But there's just so much better glitters out there. And I have a theory that they took these off because other people were complaining about this being a messy, chunky glitter because it's true. Same thing as far as being chunky with this very Valentino Dream Dust Reflective Eye Glitter. This had so much potential. Tell me how beautiful this looks. How eye-catching is that? Guys, this looks like craft glitter. Seriously. You can get this at Michael's. Really. Okay. Hobby Lobby. Now I did put this on top of a green eyeshadow look to give it a chance because it does have a sticky base unlike the Patrick Ta. Well, the problem, once I put it on, and obviously it looked better with a matching base underneath, but it still looked chunky and it creased like crazy. It does not wear well on a 3D eyeball. It can't deal with the movement of the eye very well, so. I'm out on that and this is really expensive. Valentino is inexpensive for what brand? It's crazy. <laughs> mascara. I have three. The first one I don't have. It's this Tarte Tubing Mascara. It doesn't do much for my eyelashes and it's impossible to get off. When it comes to tubing mascaras, they're supposed to coat around the lash and then they don't come off with regular makeup remover. It has to be with water and it pulls off the eyelashes and tubes. No, I was wearing this mascara for three days straight because I couldn't get it off, so that offended me. The next one, another tubing mascara. This is from... <laughs> Milani, I'm laughing because of thinking about how my eyelashes look with this on. This is the highly rated, who's rating it? Lash Extensions Tubing Mascara. Okay, let me curl my lashes so you can see. Just for reference, I say this every time, I don't have good eyelashes. They're straight down, sparse, thin. My reason for saying that is just in general, a good mascara doesn't look that good on me, but if you can see my lashes, you know, that's the win. That's the dub right there. This gives me like a total of four eyelashes and I only have like six. So the fact that it decreases the amount of eyelashes I have is very disappointing. It's so heavy. And if you try to build it up slash separate the lashes, they will continue to clump together to the point where you literally have two eyelashes. And not only that, I just curled my lashes. This mascara has such heavy weight to it that my lashes 
within seconds have completely fallen down and they'll continue to fall down to where my eyelashes literally look like this. It's the strangest thing. Anyways, I'm going to refrain from applying another coat of this because it just gets worse. I mean, you can see my eyelashes literally frowning. <laughs> okay, next up. Ugh. I love LYS and I'm really sorry, but this is a terrible mascara. So this is the Lash Confidence Mascara. First of all, we're gonna repeat that problem where I have small lashes. This is the biggest one, so this is a personal problem. This is too big for my lashes. But you know, I totally recognize that that is a personal problem. I wouldn't write it off because of it. Well, I would write it off because of that, but I wouldn't put it in the worst makeup videos if it really is truly just a personal problem. I also have a problem with this formula. Now, I've had this mascara for a few months, but it has taken months for this to improve. It is so wet and clumpy, and once again, when a mascara is too wet on my lashes, they will just begin to fall down. I think this is holding up a little bit better than the Milani, but not by much. But again, this is months old mascara. When I first got this, it was so wet and clumpy. So much of the product just collected on the spoolie. Not the spoolie, the applicator. And it's so big, I always make a mess. It always touches my skin. Just not not a good mascara, not doing anything but negative things for my lashes that are already just holding on by a thread. I wasn't going to put eyeshadows in this video because I do have an eyeshadow palette ranking coming up. They really were trying to charge us $50 for the House Labs Eye Library eyeshadow. And these totally got me. I went into store and I swatched these and these were so buttery, so pigmented. And when I purchased them, I was kind of shocked at the price point. I was like, oh, but they did feel really nice by swatch in store. Then I applied them on the eyes. The color does not translate on the skin with how it looks in the pan. So for example, this barely shows up on me. This is so light. Even the vibrant shimmer shades in these palettes, they don't pull vibrant at all on the eyelids. And the mattes, I'm telling you, they are so sheer and dull. That's basically the best word to describe these eyeshadows. They're so dull. And at $50, like they had some balls putting this at a $50 price point. It's a six pan eyeshadow palette from a brand that is not known for eyeshadow. I thought it was ballsy, but I really thought they felt good in store. And then I applied them. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, so lip products. I feel like it's really hard to mess up a lip product. Sure, there are lip products that maybe I won't reach for as often that I'm not in love with. Products that I think are better. You know, there's a lot of average lip products out there, but there's not a lot of bad lip products out there. So it was highly disappointing when I tried the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Colors. The biggest tip I have for this, do not have anything on your lips. Make sure they are bone dry. Mine are pretty dry right now, so that's perfect. Because if there's any trace of moisture on the lips, these will separate. Do you see that? Do you see how uneven it is in application? It's streaky. It's the strangest thing and they swim everywhere. It's so liquidy. It just gets everywhere. Let me take this off really quick. Just gonna pop on a quick lip liner. This is Monarch from Sephora Collection, by the way. Okay, this will be better, I think. Just having a base color underneath. You see that? It's uneven. For some reason, I cannot get an even application with this. And the whole marketing behind this was that it was really pigment. It's going to give you full opacity. It's just uneven and then swimming into the fine lines underneath. It's not a good product. And don't get me wrong, he has some amazing products in his line, but he really missed the ball on these. He did. Ugh, all right, guys. Anyways, those were my least favorite products of the year 2023. I mean, this is my favorite time of year for videos because it is the big roundup videos. These ones failed me. These ones are bad products that are bad the second they touch the skin and then they get even worse as time goes on. But like I said, these were just my experiences. So feel free to share yours in the comments. I hope that this video was helpful to you. 
Do not worry, we will shift the mood around. I do have my best of 2023 in the works, so get excited for that. I just filmed the 2022 favorites, where are they now video, if you wanna check that out. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I don't recommend you buy these products, but I hope I could entertain you a little bit. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.